back to today's program entitled let your health be your concern today we have in the studio uh, misty kwami baden who is a health and fit fitness advisor he's got other um, um, specialties and, and fields that he's actually uh, exploited in and today uh, we're going to speak to him mainly about diabetes diabetes is actually killing a lot of our brothers and sisters and we want to find out what is the cause how best can we manage it so welcome on for me yeah um, mr mark thanks very much for meeting you once again today is the first time i'm starting my program which the name, the name of the program is Let Your Health Be Your Concern. In, uh, in our local dialect, it's the Mawapu Mudinye Wen Hi and Ye. Let right. Your Health Be Your Concern. So I'll, I'll once again thank you for just putting me on board to come to your station to just let people know about their health. We and really want to talk about this because diabetes happens to be wiping a lot of the black race. And not just the black race, the white race and all other race and it's but it's predominant within the black race and i think it will be nice to actually talk about this in depthly and also with your specialty in terms of uh fitness that will be great something that we could actually hear from you as well so let's delve into into the field of diabetes let's let's know a little bit about it because uh i'm a bit worry about what happens i mean we we meant to be eating healthily but yet yeah. still people are being diagnosed with this deadly disease yeah yeah, yeah. before i will start with the diabetes when we were young when we were kids we all heard about something called mm. that's what our mothers always tell us you will see you will see what is it doesn't come on its own blood sugar sugar sickness mm. it doesn't come on its own something needs to be there before those diseases will set in and what is there before somebody will be diagnosed with diabetes there's one factor i need to explain and give some reasons why i'm basing my point on that mm. first of all i would like to talk about obesity why right. obesity when we talk about obesity, I will be doing the translation within our local dialect and English. That's fine, because so, a lot of our audience as well, um, the three language is quite something that we all understand quite well. So Baden will be combining a lot of this with the English language, likewise also speaking in three as well. So yes. Okay, um, okay. So, and also I'll be using more medical terminologies, but I'll make sure I'll explain, explain it that. for the understanding of our people, the audience who are listening to us. Yeah. So first of all, when you talk about diabetes, diabetes is defined as an excessive storage of body fat, frequently resulting in a significant impairment of health. Mm. The cancer diabetes are diabetes yes body no ekuta sradie bebre na eha wapumudin mm -hmm. so you're talking about fat fat within the body sradie is fat sradie yes. yeah, local like fat is sradie in our mm -hmm. local language and this topic this obesity is very very hot spark mm -hmm. within the within the year within the period of 10 years period mm -hmm. It has been sparking it is going higher mm. and i'll make sure i'll give you some statistical data mm. which was done based on the mm. health survey of england mm. that was two, 2009 mm -hmm. according to the health survey of england mm. they realized that they need to do some surveying mm. about how obesity is affecting our health and how it is called it's leading to diabetes mm -hmm. so they made the statistics mm -hmm. based on male and female mm -hmm. And they, they, they based, they classified their statistics on obese, overweight, and risks, higher risks of obesity. Mm -hmm. So if I will go to the layman's word, mm. I will start by obese. Mm -hmm. When you talk about somebody who is being obese, mm. it's like the, when I, talk, I will be mentioning some medical terms, but I'll make sure I explain. When you talk about the BMI, mm. the BMI simply is med, body mass index. Mm -hmm. With the body mass index talks about how your body fat within the body mm -hmm. 
is calculated. Mm. So the research showed us that, according to the statistics, you show that the people who are obese, mm -hmm. people who have put in on weight, mm -hmm. but they are all they are not all that fat, mm -hmm. but they've put in a, some amount of weight. Mm. It's less than 30, 30, 30, 30 percent, 30 kilograms. Mm. 30 kilograms. 30 kilograms. Mm. Okay. 30 milligrams. 30 kilograms. 30 milligrams. Um, and overweight people, mm. overweight people who have accepted that they are obese, yeah. are their BMI BMI is within twenty five and above thirty milligram, mm. thirty kg in weight. Mm. Let me say in so weight, thirty kg kilograms. in weight, mm. kilograms in weight. Mm. And people who are at risk, mm. in a higher risk, mm. are above thirty kilograms towards 40. Okay. So when you are in these ranges, mm. you, you need to know where you belong to, whether you are obese, mm. overweight, or high risk of obese. Mm -hmm. okay. And they, they base their research on, their statistics on, as compared to male and female. Mm. So the first they did was that they, they, they look at the people within the UK. I will really base my point on the in UK because I live in the UK, mm -hmm. and that's where, where I work too. So they compare male and female who are obese. Mm. The male makes up, sum up about 22%, and the female sum up about 28%. Mm. And when they come to the overweight people, people who are overweight, mm. people who can control their weight, mm -hmm. the, the, the males sum up to 44%, and the females sum up to 33%. Right. Mm -hmm. And let's so come to the in, people. Before, before you go ahead, I'm, I'm quite intrigued. We, we keep talking about about stradier mm -hmm. and uh, weight mm -hmm. you know and uh, all this is to do with fat mm -hmm. so just to ask what is what actually contributes to this fat i will you come know? there it's, yeah? it's, it's another okay very uh, important yeah. point i will hit there that's fine i'll hit it there put your weight now put your weight now uh, muscles and I say, uh, Stradian and more my yes, sir. In tea, uh, Kwame Baden so better treatment. Tea and tea. In tea, such statistics when you are my young who say, O can in your bones and mere man omo body mass and it was so same man as compare. And I am for back to being brass. Young called WHO, World Health Organization, in the year 2010, they did a report. Mm. Report in it says, Say almost um, countries about 192 and the years I research and you know, report almost um, report in the form of but okay, UK higher TM. Yeah. When you talk about UK, UK fall in the position of 23 as in men, men mm. who have diabetes mm. as rated within the 192 countries. UK men fall in the position of 23 and the female so, say um, 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 yes. So you're talking about obesity at the moment. Um, um, your obesity. Yeah. Oh, so, the whole so UK. Obese, so, tw so the men within the UK fall on the 23rd position mm -hmm. among the 90, 192. 192 countries that was actually collated in that research. Yes. And okay. when we come to the females, uh -huh. in man fall 153 as in position. 53, 53 as in number. In two things, we can figure it now. Men are not in Body mass, omu omu put you on weight same man. Mm. And I yen shed near my baby yen shed. And I do be also suggest it say. Or compare two countries, which is America, and or compare UK. Mm. The WHO compare the country like America and the UK. Mm. And no who say UK no, United USA no, diabetes na ko yes say a epidemic. Mm. It's diabetes in the way they now say America and Kwanda over there. You get some of the diabetes. Mm. I know rating or the percentage in the rating you know. The DNT, DNT, wait me at church and look at Yes. The DNT na your brothers, na your sisters, or more America, uh, or more, or more, or diabetes. Yes. The brain in UK. Yes. A a reason in B one more than. Reason can see upon reasons about hundred and one. First of all, I will touch on this point: decrease in manual jobs. Because a decrease in manual jobs are. I'm talking about, at first, we used to use our strength, we used to use our power mm. to do certain jobs. Mm. But nowadays, we don't use that strength to do those mm. jobs. And that has caused an increase in the, in the BMI, the body mass index. Mm. And also, I'll be talking about 
alcohol consumption mm. and this is a very good factor mm. I, I, because most of the alcohol that we consume contains fat mm. and it contains sugar mm. which triggers the system mm. to let the blood sugar mm. Raised mm. to certain level. In, in the, I say a, the the sugar is processed into carbohydrate, and then the byproducts become saturation in fat. That's into, right. Yeah. That's right. Mm. That's right. And like Okamba, okay, so the use of oils and refined oils. Mm. Way back, I will, I will use this example. Way back home, let's go back to Africa, where we came from. Looking at the food we eat there, looking at the oil we use to prepare our food, we were using we were using non-refined oils. We call it something like inkuto. We mm. normally use shell butter mm. to cook mm. because that shell butter is not refined. Mm. But nowadays the oils we use is refined. So mm. the content of fat is within those areas. Mm. So we have been putting on fat through those consumption of those food. Mm. And like we should, we should, the use of Radinam no, Radinam. And uh, also uh, one uh, point uh, is that the use of public cars and public transport. Mm. First mm. of all, in case you live in the UK, everybody wants to drive. Mm. Instead of him walking to the station, mm. he would like to what, sit in his car, drive to work, and come back in his car, mm. come and park the car, go to his room, shower, and sleep. Mm. With those areas, mm. people try to put on weight, mm. which is linked to people getting diabetes. Mm. And also, the consumption of sugar yeah. is also another factor. Let's look at the, where we live. Everything is made up of sugar. Whatever we consume is made up of sugar. There's no a bit food that you can eat in this UK that doesn't contain sugar. All of it is made up of sugar. So with the link of consumption of sugar, we have we have been experiencing such increase in blood sugar mm. which is affecting the life of people mm. okay. in the uk uh, uh, hold on for me Kwame Bay did. Uh, fellow audience uh we have tagged uh, a phone number on the screen please call in and ask questions that are pertinent to this very topic diabetes so please call in and then we will try and answer your questions um, and I'm coming back. What can same be brave? And uh, and and having to think about it, I, I realize that society is changing. As you said, we try comparing ourselves to U.S. I mean, then U.S. everything is, is a jumbo size. You're going for uh, chips and nuggets. You have it in a jumbo size. You're going for a, a, a cup of drink. You have it in a jumbo size. Yeah. Hence, we tend to have a high level of uh, diabetes in yeah. U.S. And we see to be having the same trend in UK as well and it's quite worrying as you're saying um, how best can we change things there should be a, a game changer I mean, what do you think there should be a game changer but they are they are measures put in place but before I come to the measures mm. I would like to talk about the pathological areas mm. when I talk about the pathological pathological is the the manner of which the disease develop mm. Mm. With diseases that we are we are talking about diabetes. Yeah. yeah. Before that, we define diabetes mm. and know how diabetes is developed. Okay. First of all, diabetes is defined as the metabolic disorder with multiple causes affecting how the individual control the blood sugar. Mm. It's a metabolic disorder. Mm -hmm. You getting what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a meta right. metabolic disorder which is affecting the system. So with that, with the metabolic disorder blood sugar is not able to energy is not being blood sugar is not being able to change into sugar for the body to use it so there's always accumulation of what sugar or sugar within the system mm. and we have two type of diabetes mm. which i'll be talking about the type 1 diabetes mm -hmm. and the type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. first of all let's focus on the to hold it for me audience please take this part very seriously Type one, type two, and the other classifications of diabetes. This comprises a lot of information, and diabetes is serious. Over to you, Mr. Baidu. Yeah. Thank you very much. I will be talking about the first of all, let's talk about the type one diabetes. Mm. 
Type 1 diabetes is a, is a, is a condition where the body attacks the, and destroys the cells that produce insulin. In Tibia, body no attack cells now it produce insulin. Because mm. insulin, insulin is sugar. Mm. Always, sugar is converted into energy, which is used by the body. Mm. It is a sad we body we need that constituent you know mm. body needs to mean changing into energy now mm. and things so so over mm. and with this condition we have a cell mm. insulin cells the insulin cells is is in within the liver mm. we or the pancreas we mm. call the pancreas the pancreas change the sugar into energy mm -hmm. so if the pancreas mm. is not able to produce enough energy for the body mm. that's what we call the type 1 diabetes mm. and i mean this how into type 1 diabetes maybe more say ah now type 1 diabetes in the cry and um, at what age or what are some of the significance of it uh it be it be say that's uh, type 1 no yeah whoa now only type 1 kind of type 1 diabetes which me actually muka cry type 1 diabetes you know it's not like that say so far as the cell mm. that produces converts sugar into energy mm. is damaged or mm. does not produce mm. enough insulin for the system mm. to be used mm. that mm. means you are suffering from diabetes in this mm. area mm. whether you're being kid it can be genetic way mm. it can be a lifestyle mm. so maybe i'll be fine or no mm. it depending on where the diagnosis will be set upon in this see i'm say Diabetes is a type 1 diabetes. Type 2 is a type 2 diabetes. Type 2 is a majority of the people. Mm -hmm. But I will come there. Mm -hmm. And to say, a type 1 diabetes, mm -hmm. then I will do it. Because doctors did not diagnose it. It is a type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. First of all, excessive testing. What is the most important thing? Excessive test. Mm -hmm. You feel like it's a common thing. You feel like drinking water mm. and excessive urination. Mm. When you are sitting there, you frequently go to the urine mm. and tell you weight loss. You mm. lose weight, you don't you, you own tear. Say, mm. not blair vision. I say, we need to your kusu mm. blair vision. We need to your kusu who near my ear be sir and a slow wound healing. Ubu are croton and one. Crony be wound, yeah, it take it time. Check a crack, check a crack, and send you. And I infections, infections to me also. And I'm the family be diabetic keto acidosis because the keto acidosis, I may break in a different, I may break in a smaller level. No, be at it. I say the family be acetone, acetone breath. You will nip a bit of honor, say a castle with your diabetes, type 1 diabetes. I won't say a cold drink, so I when the person pass urine, you hear some the sense of. Fruity scent mm. in the urine or oh, acidic scent, yes, mm. acidic scent that's called a keto acidosis mm -hmm. within the urine. Mm -hmm. The acetone scent mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. like I said, Johnson or eh, fruity, mm -hmm. which who smell it. Ah, we know mm -hmm. those are the signs that the doctors mm -hmm. based on to mm -hmm. diagnose somebody with a type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. My make for a crown some tosso, make a kaipa, and I think uh, one of the uh, research in any more more cancer say for you to also be able to identify say or oh, diabetes in so a lot of time, what me call Johnson or Adriano, not just say a bit attractive, once in a month, once in a month, yeah, 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 uh, and it's also a sign that you 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 actually having diabetes. Yeah, in terms medicine, in church, in my ultra. Young called type two diabetes. Yeah. You know, type two diabetes. You know, it is a condition that the pancreas produces insulin, but the target tissues are unresponsive. Mm. Body never produces insulin, no? but target issues tissues now body no. It doesn't respond. Mm. So because of this, there will be accumulation of sugar mm. or there will be accumulation of glucose mm. within the body's body. Mm. So when there's too much accumulation of sugar within the body, mm. and this type of diabetes is always known in older people. Mm. But this time around, we don't see it in the older people. We see it in the young people rather. Mm. 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 Yeah. That's why the name 
adult onset diabetes came around because it was known with mm. older people mm. but now with this because of genetic link mm. it, it, it's it's affecting young people mm. Mm. and when you talk about the, within the uk mm. the research has suggested that suggested that the coming 2025 mm. 5 million people will be diagnosed with type 2, type 2 diabetes mm. 5 million people will be diagnosed mm. so there are one or two signs of symptoms you you can see when somebody is having type 2 diabetes. Mm, mm. First of all, mm. increase in taste. Ma, 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 Mr. Baidi, I see my work kind of attaching my pie, and, and just as you are saying, say, I mean, looking at the year 2025 mm -hmm. now, diabetes is going to increase now. It's going and, to double two times. And, and and if you look at it, it is it's a testament of what is happening now. In dream, and then no na yeko yeko ejuma yebe full bus yebe full train na gidi gidi na yeko ba se si a inkufu bebre ejuma fifi so. Lack of exercise. Uh, also, now nah, government catcher and say we to me a can watch them. So all these things tells us that a lot of people are not exercising enough. So there is a possibility say they are gaining weight, and gaining of weight always leads to diabetes. That's our all That's right. And obviously, as okay earlier, on the type two is always a life choice, mm -hmm. uh, uh, lifestyle of eating. Uh, uh, unhealthily and, and and gaining unnecessary weight and then it, and it was also uh, it, known in adult mm, adults older mm, people but now mm. the trend is changing yeah, yeah. young people Inquara, are, Inquara, 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 type, uh, two. type two say, say, uh, mm, why yeah. because it's a link to genetic factors mm -hmm. family issues if your father is having it you can get it mm -hmm. if your mother is having if your sister is having it and you give birth to your other it, it, it's cut mm -hmm. across or, or, or other places mm. so let me go to one of the two of the mm. signs and symptoms mm. when you have the type 2 diabetes you can increase in taste you feel like drinking more water dry mouth mm. every time you see that your mouth is very dry mm. whenever you can drink water just now within 10 20 minutes you see that your mouth is frequent urination the beer you on so ten them on explain weight loss it's also a factor when we say you are deteriorating you don't know the cause of the deterioration. So you wonder yourself, what am I doing with them deteriorating? Am I not eating well? You've been eating well, but still you've been deteriorating. Mm. And let's go to the other one. Fatigue, weak, and tiredness. Mm. Feeling like you are sick, tired. Mm. That's also one of the factors mm. that you can notice within people who have type 2 diabetes. And loss of consciousness. Headache and blur vision. Mm -hmm. So these are one of the signs and things you, you can identify among people mm. who have di type 2 diabetes. But I say, uh, Mr. Baden. Hello, audience. Um, uh, Kwame Baden has actually explained a lot about diabetes. I just want us to take a quick commercial break and we'll be with you shortly. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I I said, if you have some problem, you can ask us what we are going to do. We are going to say, we do two hours, we tell him. And say, I'm going to ITS Pro Center. ITS Pro Center. I'm going to say, it is pro. And yes, I say, we are here. We are teaching crop for the amount of SIA license. Now, we are going to say, 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 Pro center. And what any bit of amount here? By four days, prepare pet. Now on account certificate. And the other thing I was never gonna catch up to you. ITL Pro Training Center. No. And yeah, as I quan yeah you. Yeah, yes, CLC has card so I can't win. CLC has card so no. I just one day training pep. Now we will swap on cyber sacan health and safety certificate so. And do it why are they? And if you have for a girl win, or maybe you will train it. Ah, I'm going to share my site. It's been a minute now. What you are doing? And now you want to make it? But my dear, never. I was standing by you so. Standing by you. 
078 ITS Pro Training Center. Address 453 to 457 First Floor, Leverage Road, E10 7E. Bus is Dudu and one FAO. Bomadia and a brand new year. And the FAO is over your bar. I'm not sure if you construction and security. And do your prayer. Now you can't cassa. Yes, I'll tell you cassa also. Training center week. That's a great training center week. Two years with some cast certificate. Now you're going to be a Your health is your concern. And uh, our number is pinned beneath the, um, the screen. Uh, please call in. And, and ask your questions and we'll try as much as possible to answer them. Um, Mr. Baden, welcome on again. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I was talking about the type of diabetes. Because of time, I will try to hit on each and everyone and explain it simply so that everybody will get a little bit of knowledge about that. So secondly, we have, thirdly, we have the secondary diabetes, which is the blood sugar, where the blood sugar affected due to other primary conditions it can be hepatic cirrhosis mm -hmm. if i talk about the hepatic it's about the liver cirrhosis mm -hmm. of the yeah. liver disorder of the liver that also can cause a secondary factor i will talk about the gestational diabetes when i talk about the gestational diabetes it's a kind of diabetes which are mm -hmm. mostly experienced in women women who are pregnant and those diabetes comes when the woman is pregnant and after the pregnancy and it normally happens within 24 weeks and 28 weeks of pregnancy. And after the, the, the woman has delivered safely, within two to three weeks, those, that diabetes just go up, which mm. is among women. Mm. That, that is what I will talk about, the gestational. Before I go to the, before I leave the gestational, I will go to the health complications. There are some health complications which affect the individual. Who are suffering from either type one, type two, type yeah. three, yeah. and the and the gestational and the secondary diabetes. First of all, most frequently we experience a common health complications such as cardiovascular disease. When I talk about the cardiovascular, it talks about the increased risk of hypertension, heart disease, stroke, disabilities, and limitation. This these factors always limit limit people from their day to day activities. When somebody is having uh, acute heart problems or having di having uh, having a hypertension, the the, fa the the probability of the person going to his daily activity will be prevented or will be reduced, which mm. will affect his income. Mm. So, secondly, I'll be talking about nephropathy. When I talk about nephropathy, nephropathy is the peripheral nephropathy peripheral nerves or sensitivity leading to the body mm. the sensitive part of the body mm. sometimes because of the person is having diabetes the person will be feeling pain mm -hmm. within the body mm. because of the accumulation of sugar within the mm. system the person goes through pains and all sorts of those things so mm. such person cannot even move the leg to go to work yeah. or to do his or the daily task and let's talk about food problem mm. and this has been increasing mm. both uk in other mm. parts of the country mm. most of most often people with diabetes always have food problem mm. either the leg will be amputated mm. or they will be hospitalized or they will be bed bound mm. if i talk about bed bound because of diabetes people are being placed in bed without being able to move Mm. So, how, how does that happen? It, 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 it sometimes intrigues me just to find out how that happens. I mean, is there, is there anything, is there anything we could actually pick out through that, you know, in terms of like what contributes to somebody uh, getting to a point of being bed bound or having 
or edema on the on the leg, leg. You know what what actually contributes to that? You see, when there is accumulation of sugar within the system, remember that the kidney is the is the organ that secretes every fluid that the body takes in. So if the kid this process will that uh, we have the program called the nephropathy. Mm. The property is the dysfunction of the kidney or the other part of the body which leads to the accumulation of fluid within the system. So mm. when there is fluid within the system, you see people with edema of the leg, mm. the swelling of the legs. Mm. Sometimes when you press the leg, you feel that there's inflammation within mm. the leg. Mm. So that is the accumulation of fluid mm. which is caused by the diabetic as a factor mm. and leading to the, the problems such as mm. being not able to walk feeling edema of the legs, mm. finding problem with movement. Mm. So such things sometimes trigger our life, yeah. which prevents mm. us from mm. doing our normal day-to-day -day activities. Yeah, correct. And I'll, I'll, let's go to the neuropathy. Mm. I'll be talking about neuropathy. Neuropathy is the... Okay, I've spoken about the neuropathy. I'll be talking about nephropathy. Diabetes, okay. The cause of kidney disease reduce the functioning, which cause fatigue, kidney failure, and fetal. And I'll be talking, let, let me go about retinopathy. Mm -hmm. When you talk about retinopathy, retinopathy is the capillaries that supply blood with, to the eye. Mm -hmm. When those, when you have, you have diabetes, those aspects of the capillary that supply blood to, blood to the retina of mm -hmm. the eye mm -hmm. is damaged. Mm -hmm. So that's where you get eye problem, blurred vision, mm -hmm. blindness, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So when you can't see, you can't move on. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, not just cutting you short, but it just tells me that when you have diabetes, so many things can just go wrong. Totally you know, is. like right from your the, the top of your head right to the to the sole bottom of your foot, and uh, we need to be careful as a society to actually um, forget what kind of food and even fruit. To eat because sometimes some some fruits can actually contribute a lot to diabetes. So we have to be careful what actually we put into our system. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Before that, I will move to the, the test that the, we we base on as mm. a medical professional. Mm. We base on to mm. diagnose somebody with diabetes. Mm. And we have I will be talking about the type one diabetes. The test we do to determine whether someone is having the type one diabetes or the mm. type two diabetes. Yeah. First of all, we do the F FPG. The FPG is known as the plasma glucose test, such as the fasting plasma glucose mm. test. Whereby we leave the client or the patient to fast for eight hours mm. or, after, or more than eight hours, and we take the blood from the vein mm -hmm. and we check it, we take it to the lab. And if the, if the how, how long, how long? How long do you do in terms of the the process? How long is it? Is it a day check or two days? You know, in terms of like from the point of taking the blood and then the point of actually giving a result. How long is this? You see, depending on the time the blood comes to the lab. Mm. If we, we are taking the blood within the hospital mm. and it reaches our end within, let me see, five minutes, 15 minutes, mm. We need to we need to run the test. We so how to, long how long would that test long, last? It will, not, it will take let me say three to four hours. Okay, and then you get to, a result. We'll, and we'll, then but the doctors have the to interpret. Practitioners need to need to signify it mm. and make sure all what the result is saying is is tangible or is is a good one or is a the, 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 let me say the good results they are taking it out they mm. need to pass through some process mm. before the results will come out mm. okay so when the, when the blood sugar is above 120 milligrams that means you are being diagnosed as a type 1 diabetes mm. and secondly you have the oral glucose tolerance test oral glucose tolerance test this is where the blood sugar we we, we the person fast when the person fast for let me say eight hours, two or three yeah. hours, mm. we let the person drink about two hundred and thirty-seven millimeters of glucose, glucose solution like mixed meals, with, yeah. yeah, mixed with 100, 100 grams of sugar. We let the person drink it. After that, we check the sugar level. 
if it's within the range that falls and that the person being diagnosed as a diabetes mm. then we take it up that's the type 1 diabetes mm. we put the person on even drug mm. and the next one i'll talk about the type 2 diabetes mm. the type 2 diabetes we have a test that we do we have the hemoglobin a1c test mm -hmm. that we do this is the primary method we, we use to diagnose diabetes mm. when i talk about hemoglobin hemoglobin is part of the red blood cells mm, yeah we produce oxygen we produce oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body mm. so with this we, we just get the red blood cells mm. and we check the hemoglobin level mm. And come out with a diagnosis. Okay, I'm quite intrigued, but I I want us to get to the management of diabetes. That's where I am. Yes, yes I am. lovely, yes. lovely. Because uh, I mean, we, we, we've used a lot of uh, medical terms now, and but then uh, we we want to see. I mean, if I have a type one or type two, how best can I be able to to manage it? What medications or what lifestyles? should I be indulging in to actually get this under control? Over to you, um, yes, um, yes. I'm coming to Mr. the management Biden. of diabetes. I'll be talking about the management of mm. type 1 diabetes, mm. which is point clear. Mm. Th those areas need to be, I'll talk about the nutritional aspects and mm. I'll be giving my point also in the fitness aspect. Correct. You need to yeah. Yeah. emerge those Because two. obviously yes. you are a fitness yeah. advisor, so yeah. yes. So first of all, People with type 1 diabetes need to consume natural fat. They need to be fed on natural fat. When I talk about natural fat, it's the butter that we eat. Mm. The butter that we eat is a form of natural fat. Because you need to con consume those in a moderation to be able to mm. let the body... Yeah. So obviously, yeah, as you just said, we'd have to look at the margarines that we eat. Yeah, but margarine. even with the margarines, obviously, uh, our audience, be careful. Some margarines are very high calories. So those are things you need to be careful about. Um, so look at the, on the, on the packaging, the carb that is there, look at it to make sure that it's, it's, it's carb level is very low. So you could benefit from it. Yes. Okay. Let me go to the next point. Consume food high in protein and fiber. Mm. You need to eat food that is high in protein and fiber. Why? Because when you eat food that is high in fiber and protein, sustains energy. Yeah. The, the, the energy in those food is sustainable. Yeah. So it can lead you to a long period of time yeah. so that... <laughs> Exactly. Uh, just to add to it, it also tells us that we should be indulging in a lot of a ketogenic diet. Exactly. I mean, so having a diet which is very less in carbs, but very high in protein. Exactly. I mean, so you look at the, uh, um, the diet that you're eating and that will help you. Yeah. Let's go to the eat pieces of fruit per, per day, depending on the type of, kind of disease you're having. Either type one type, you need to eat different type of fruit. Mm. But for instance, banana is good, but banana is not all that very, good very, for, yeah, it's for people with high. diabetes. Yeah. So you need mm. to know how to balance your fruit. Mm. You got know what I'm saying? Yeah. Always consume vegetables. Eat four, three or four portions of vegetables every day. Mm. Three or four portions of vegetables mm. every day should be mm. consumed. Mm. And also, avoid eating processed food. Mm. That's the main problem in this country. Mm. Avoid eating processed food. I think it's, that has actually become the norm of the day, really, because you get to the supermarket, everything is processed. We just pick and go. And it's not really helping us that much. Um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Th thanks for that, um, Mr. Baidi. And, and yeah. also, reduce caffeine consumption in the afternoon because caffeine disturbs sleep caffeine when you consume too much caffeine you can't sleep you can't get a good sleep so mm. reduce the consumption of caffeine mm. and also re reduce the intake of alcohol because alcohol contains a lot of sugar mm. if you are taking alcohol three bottles a day mm. reduce it and replace it with water okay hold that thought dear audience we want to take a quick commercial break I will be right back. Yeah. 
ITS Pro Training Center. Address 453 to 457 First Floor, Leverage Road, E10 7E. Bus is due to one one. Fahu. Bomo diya na brand ne ya. Enti yam fahu zawa yo ba. Bomo tsu beti miya wako shwa shena se kweti. Enti wo diya fraye. Na ya kwa kasa. Ya sa wakwa kasa anso. Training Center we. Na sa kwe Training Center we. Tu ya. Wo sa beka sa duke. Na wo diya kwa yiya juma. Hello audience, thanks for staying put with us. We're back from our commercial break. And uh, Mr. Kwame Baden is still talking about diabetes management. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Man. I was touching the point of measures to mm. control di or manage diabetes. Mm. And I've touched on several points, which I'll add to it so that mm -hmm. you, you... Round it up. Yeah. So, Last but not the least, consumption of fluid. Mm. You need to, when you are diabetic, depending on the type of diabetic you mm. are, mm. you need to drink some amount of water. Mm. And according to the, let me say the, the, the nutritional guidelines, mm -hmm. at least you need to drink two liters of water every day and avoid sugary and freezy drinks. Mm. Two liters of water, which makes up to Eight glasses of water mm -hmm. or ten pence mm. of water. You need to consume that amount of water. Yeah. Very and important, isn't and it? Um, the number of people who live in UK make sure you prepare your small food mm. and take it to work. Mm. Because when you have a small time, you prepare your food, just take it to work to mm. consume. Mostly, what we, we, we are suffering from is um, how we consume our lunch. Mm. We don't have time to consume eat our lunch and we don't eat proper food when mm. we are awake mm. because by the time you finish or you want to go to your lunch you feel that you are already tired mm -hmm. the time is already spent mm -hmm. so you don't know what kind of you see them buying yeah. different kind of yeah. food yeah. sugary food filling yeah. to trying to just occupy the stomach with those food which i think is not fair and also mm -hmm. i'll base my point on the perspective of diet in the the, the cardiac aspect Mm -hmm. There are some kind of food that we need to eat to improve the cardiac output. When I talk about the cardiac output, I'm talking about like heart or to improve the heart or the circulation system mm -hmm. within the heart. So first of all, I've talked about the saturated fat to be limited. Saturated fat should be limited and we need to do, we eat unsaturated fat. Mm -hmm. Fat that can easily be dissolved mm -hmm. or that can easily 
leave the system, mm -hmm. leave the immune system. So we also reduce salt intake. Mm -hmm. When you reduce salt intake, you try to maintain your cardiac output. Also, we need to consume more Mediterranean food, such as seafood, legumes, lentils, thick pears, nuts, and seeds. Mm. Fruit, food that contains seeds, mm. nuts, chicken pear, and lentils, legumes, seafood, and leafy green, leafy mm. green food. Mm. On turmeric, mm -hmm. those food need to be consumed. Mm -hmm. Those areas need to be taken into consideration yeah. whenever you are yeah. preparing your food. For example, you can buy your leafy foods, you cut, you wash it clean, mm. you cut it, and you consume them. But also, avoid trans fat acid food. Mm. When I talk about trans fatty acid food, they are unsaturated fatty acid or type of acid that are found in margarines. The margarines that we eat, you know, we have so many types of margarines. Yeah. Those fats in the acid are not good for consumption. Yeah. So we need to be very, very careful about yeah. fat we consume. So I will be touching about the diet also for the type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. This one is for the type 1 diabetes. I'm going to the type 2 diabetes. In the type 2 diabetes, you need to manage your weight, the glucose level. By managing your glucose level, you need to manage your weight. Mm. Whenever the weight is on, yeah. glucose level is high. So you yeah, need right. to try to manage your glucose level. And always focus on calories, calorific amount. Don't focus on the micro energy constituent. Mm -hmm. Any food that you consume, look at the calories that is contained within the food. Don't look at the micronutrients you get from the food. Mm. So if I'm having, I'm eating banana and I'm having 10 calories, check if it is good for the system. But don't look at what the food is going to give me. Mm -hmm. Look at the calories you're consuming. Yeah. That, 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 that makes a lot of sense. J j just to add to this, uh, I was following um, uh, a, um, a doctor. He's actually a renal expert, and uh, he conducts a lot of uh, operations and, and also quite knowledgeable in diabetes as well. And he said something very, very uh, moving, which he said, look, uh, to be able to cap down your diabetic management, one of the areas we should be looking at is fasting. Um, he said fasting is very good because what happens when you fast, you actually cutting down the number of calories in your body and it's breaking down. So the body then tends to, to cause it to work a little bit more. Okay, so energy is pumped out the body uses that energy, and energy is just made up of calories. So that actually limits that level of calories in your body. Yeah, so yeah. fasting, it might sound quite religious, you, you, but... Fasting will come but, in due to, depending on your health condition. Yes, yes, yeah, correct, as you've said. It might, because some people cannot fast in a way. But even three, four hours of fast is even good for you. You know, trying to manage it That's properly. That's intermittent yeah. fasting. Yes. Intermittent Fasting yes. is part of the exercise. Right. Yeah. yeah. There are some days you need to fast. Yeah. So it's insulin within the system will be yeah, will sensitized be, yeah. so that it will be released. Because when the insulin is released and doesn't get any any bonds to bind with it, it goes away from the system. Mm. Which that is what we need the body to be. We need to release some sugar level from the system mm. so that the body will bring the blood pressure or retention down. This normal state, mm. which is a good point. And also, we need to consume energy. Consume should be energy consumed should be less than energy output. When it's equal, energy input is equal to energy output. That means you're not doing anything. Eat less and bring more out. Mm. Eat less and bring more out. Consume mm. less energy. So how do we bring it out? That's if right. you can explain that a little bit, if, if how I'm, can we bring I'm, it out? If I'm consuming, let me say, three calories of energy, yeah. food, food that contains three calories, mm -hmm. I, will, I, will, I will not consume more, more than the three. Because when I consume more than the three, remember that the diabetes is a metabolic disorder. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which has affected, which has been classified as an autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. 
because of the metabolic disorders, immune system cannot metabolize whatever it takes in. When you eat more, there will be accumulation within the system. All when right. you eat less, you bring more out. And you can do that through exercise. When yeah. you eat your grave, 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 leafy vegetables, you eat less vegetables, you eat small protein, you need small fiber, and see in the morning, you don't feel heavy. As soon as you do your one, two cardiac exercise, feel free to bring more out and you replace yeah. it with yeah. less. So I believe at this point you're actually talking about the output should be, uh, will be, will be catalyzed mm -hmm. by a lot of exercise that you do exactly. because you eat a little but then you you exercise more so um, um, the energy in, in you is burned out mm -hmm. okay and you burning energy just means you're Remember burning you are calories you are as well sustainable energy yeah sustainable food that mm -hmm. contains energy yeah a food that is can be can be sustained for a long period of time mm -hmm. a energy consuming food yeah you don't you are not consuming the one which will leave the body within the seconds mm -hmm. so whenever you eat those areas those food remember that those energy is a long-term energy can be stored in the body for a long time so in case you don't feed on anything it's still it's still it's, it's still just burning. sitting in you yeah. so you need to burn it out That's yeah right. you need That's to right. burn it out That's yeah right. so right. exercise is very important and we should take that and also i will come to yeah. the exercise prescription before yeah. i end the program i will come to the exercise prescription before somebody will be allowed to do exercise, there are some risk stratifications that we need to look at before we put the person on exercise. Mm. When I talk about risk stratification, it's, they are the environment for the individual who is going to participate in the exercise. What are the precautions? What areas do you need to look at for the person to participate or try to do the exercise? So you need to look at those areas in order to, and I have some contraindicators that we need to base on to make sure if the person is having those conditions, mm. you need to look into it very carefully as a fitness instructor, mm. as a fitness instructor, you okay. need to look at it very carefully. Yeah. And some of them will touch on those points. Okay. You need to look at whether the person is having unstable angina. angina. If I talk mm. about angina, is the sharp pain within the chest. Mm. That's a factor. Don't let the person train. You need to consult with the person, mm -hmm. refer the person to your doctor, mm -hmm. let the doctor look into it and bring a report to you that the person is safe to your exercise. Also, unstable accurate heart failure mm -hmm. is also a fact that if a person has been diagnosed of heart failure, yeah. you don't need to exercise. You need to keep a clear eye on that as a fitness advisor. And also, people with resting diastolic blood pressure. When I talk about the diastolic blood pressure, you see when you are doing blood pressure, you have the down figure and the top figure. The diastolic is the down figure, the systolic is the top figure. So right. when the diastolic is 100%, you need to let the person stop the exercise, refer the person to the doctor, so that the doctor will do his further check. And if the top number is above 180, don't let the person exercise, consult his doctor, write a letter about what you've seen, write a report, let the doctor know so that he will deal with that. So mm -hmm. before I end, I will go to, we have something called the comorbidities. There are some diseases which are which are in line with other diseases, coexisting with other diseases. A disease like diabetes can be there with high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. How then do you put these people on exercise? The same person is having blood pressure, the same person is having diabetes, yeah. and the same person can be obese. Yeah. So you need to know about the exercise you need to put the person through. That's why the fitness industry have the system called the FIT. You need to apply the FIT system. When I talk about the FIT, the FIT is Frequency, the F stands for frequency, yeah. intensity, time, and type of exercise. So first of all, according to the guidelines, you need to train five times a day. Mm. Five times within the week. Five times within the week. But for how many how many periods in terms of the, minutes? It depends on the exercise. Right? If the okay. exercise is vigorous, mm -hmm. you do it for 10 minutes. At least 10 minutes. If it's not vigorous, moderate, low to moderate, you need to do it about... 20 25 minutes right which is okay, okay for the body yeah. and also the intensity intensity should be slow yeah you, should, you can't train somebody with diabetes in a, in a fast pace yeah. you need to relax all right you need to go from walking to bricks walking bricks walking to jogging 
jogging to start jogging mm. or jogging to the treadmill yeah. which can improve them yeah. which is start from the intensity of flow and mm. look at the exercise that you can't tell somebody who is obese to do, to do press ups mm. you need to look at the exercise you are putting correct. the person into correct. that's maybe when you don't put them on the right hand side it will discourage the people from exercising it will not motivate them to exercise yeah. so we need to look at the apply the fit system according to the type of disease the person is mm. having. So j just to round that up, uh, Mr. Baden is just saying we should use the smart approach to all this, okay? The smart approach, whereby you don't overburden the person with a lot of exercise, that will rather break them, but give them an exercise that will rather make them winners and also live healthier. Um, Ms. Baden, is there anything you want to add to this before we round up? Yeah, I will. And also, I will not forget about the tempo, yeah. the tempo of the exercise. Yes. The exercise should be rhythmically. Mm -hmm. It should be rhythmically mm -hmm. performed. And mm -hmm. it should, the tempo should be on beat. One, one, two, 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 one. Mm -hmm. You can't do tempo of five, 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 mm -hmm. five, three, two. Mm -hmm. The tempo should be rhythmical. Wow. Whenever it's, you're doing treadmill, the treadmill should be rhythmically. Mm -hmm. And I'll always urge people to always motivate the exercise is not easy you need to motivate yourself whatever right. you are doing whether you are exercising always focus to achieve the positive aspect of it. and always make sure you exercise with the, with, with the mindset that you are going to achieve what is on the board mm -hmm. or what is on the table don't just exercise without knowing what you want to achieve or don't exercise without putting the safety reasons or the risk stratification in, in place right. because it can lead you to problems which you, you will not be expecting or it can lead you to areas which will get your condition worse so right. i'll urge everyone always exercise according to it or you need to get an expert who is in who knows about exercise who yeah. knows how to perform exercise and who knows the implications of exercise okay. to guide you yeah. to follow your exercise there's no disease in this world that cannot be money that cannot be controlled exercise so put in mind that every exercise or most of the exercise have guidelines to follow thank you mr Baden. Yeah. Uh, is there anything you want to say to our loved ones uh, a quick maybe just a two-liner or anything you want to say to our loved ones back at home uh, I would like to use this opportunity to thank everyone who is listening to us, especially the uh, Party for giving me such a platform to express or advise my fellow people, my, my people, being it people in the diaspora, whoever is watching me, I really thank them for taking, really taking this opportunity to listen to me, taking some aspect of advice from what I said. So if you need, if you want any consultation or if you are in under any condition that you want to call me or link me anywhere, you can call the, the number pin at the down there. So okay, right. uh, thank you, Mr. Bay.